Um, I'm Flavio Perez, uh, CTO of an uh, animation company called L'Effet Special, based in Montpellier in France. And I'm going to talk about this uh, feature film, our third one uh, we made um, during the COVID and how we did it. So, just a little bit of background. It's uh, September 1980, and Iraq just declared war to Iran. So, it's a war that will last for seven years. Abadan here, uh, southwest of Iran, it's a strategic town uh, with one of the world's largest refineries, which is this huge building. Um, there will be a siege of Abadan, which will last for a year, and the story takes place during that siege. And at the beginning of the movie, uh, many people are leaving or joining the army to fight, and some decide to stay. It's the case of our hero, Hamid. His family is leaving, and his elder brother is joining the army. But he decides to stay with uh, his grandfather to help him. And he will meet a lot of attaching personalities in the journeys about to start and, and maybe love. <laughs> Let's see that in the movie. So the series is a feature film. Uh, the production is over, um, and the movie is going through the, its final uh, post-production stage, including sound mixing, and will be released later in 2023. You might hopefully see it in festivals before that. So um, the movie was screenwriter by Jawad Jawari, uh, the director Sepi De Farsi. Uh, she's a director from uh, live action, and it was his first animation movie. The art direction, you will, see, you will see that is very strong. It's coming from Zaven Najjar. Uh, he's the one who decided to do this movie in Blender seven years ago. So, and it was produced by Sebastiano. There is a lot of partners in the production. So I'm not going to name them all, but uh, that will also have an impact on how we do the, the, the movie. Uh, so, I'm, as I mentioned, there is strong visual art defining this project. Um, it's made out of Illustrator, so it's uh, very uh, full shapes and stuff like that. Uh, there is a very specific look, as you can see, uh, of vectorial shapes. The work is highly documented, of course, and we can see this in uh, photos from the cinema before it was destroyed and, and the creation of the sets on the, on the right side. Uh, here are the mosque here, which was uh, next to the, uh, the, the, the church, you can see it on the photo here, uh, and which, which was a military place during the siege. Um, so you see, very highly detailed illustrator style for, for the sets. There is color palettes, uh, for example here the greens, the browns, um, the blues, <laughs> there is different, you know, different style. But uh, the art director, Zevin, was willing to do this movie in Blender, so uh, this is where we step in, and the producer came to see us to, see, to ask us how we do that in Blender. So the main idea here is, um, is you, you take a, from a storyboard, you create an illustrator file, of course. This illustrator file will be exported as PNG sequences uh, of layers. We'll see that in detail. And going through in Blender, we have some tools to create a 3D space. We'll also dig into that later. And then we have three assets, of course, from the characters to props and vehicles and stuff like that. So, uh, and then the, the parallax allows us to, to do some, I mean, the, this spacing of the layers allows us to, to create some parallax. And then we go back to After Effects and, and bring back also the Illustrator file to, to do the compositing on the original material, even in fact been uh, moved around in, in Blender. So you have the... The, the, the full idea. So this is the um, preview of the real steps. This is a real uh, pattern as designed by the pipelinepatterns.com uh, suggestions. Um, and we are going to go through each and every one of the steps, of course, today. So here is the first step. So creating an illustrator file. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm not going to explain everything. <laughs> um, there is a lot of shots in the movie, but we start with the assets. Uh, we will need to be organized to, to handle this, of course. To all, there is 1,800 uh, 1, uh, well, 1, shots, that's a lot, and 3,000 assets uh, for this movie. Uh, so the characters is the first thing. So it's very close to the, the, the art style, you know, the illustrator style. You can see here a turnaround of the 3D modeling. Um, there is a lot of cheating here, there is no real uh, casting shadows and stuff like that, it's a fake shadow. Uh, there is a rig controllers on the shadow, of course, if we need for some cases, or even the shadows on the, on the nose uh, are little uh, uh, geometries uh, with the inverse normals and stuff like that. Here is another example. Uh, 
we can go on forever as there is many characters and the question is how many characters well there is a lot like uh, 300 main characters, uh, just for the, uh, the you know, the, the characters. A lot of variations and stuff like that. Uh, some pets you will see, animals at the end, and then a lot of props. Um, yeah, a lot of them, kids, pets, a lot of cats. And then the, <laughs> the main, there is a lot of cats around. This is the main character, he has uh, 30 variations. Uh, we decided actually to not do a, a rig system where you can switch the variations. It's one variation per uh, file, so we avoid uh, issues later on. Um, so then the Illustrator file, as I mentioned, so uh, there is a, it's files with a lot of layers, so <laughs> obviously uh, there is some uh, helpful layers with a perspective and annotation and, and storyboard and stuff like that. And then it's a it's highly detailed level of, of uh, uh, um, shapes, uh, uh, but that is exported as a, as a sequence of PNGs, as I mentioned also. So you can see here the same shot, and all the layers are a different PNG. Uh, yeah, uh, there is an average of 16 layers per shot, but the biggest one was like 50 shots, 50 layers. Sorry, uh, it's uh, 6,000 pixel wise. 6,000 yeah, pixel wise uh, um, set, uh, which was a nightmare to load on, on Blender, of course, in the, in the <laughs> graphical cards memory and stuff like that. So we, we had to create tools for making proxies and, and stuff like that. So the first step usually it's to put the, the, the shots in, the, in, in the, the layers in the shot. So we have uh, this camera plane uh, tool which you import the layers, and it, then it's pretty easy to, to set up the, the the scene and move the layers around. You can group them. You can here you have um, when they are important. You have the list of layers, the distance to the camera. So you you know you just play around and create quickly a, a, a space uh, because that would be useful for to put the, the the 3D asset in the right place or having some parallax effect in some cases and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you see examples. Uh, actually, um, we'll see that at the end on the real. Uh, layout file, uh, you will see that there is usually two cameras. There is one camera for the, the set, uh, production set, and one for the action. Uh, so we have two different cameras, they are not linked, so we can move around and, and you know, create a sp space. So here we, we imported an asset and then we set up the camera more or less correctly, and then we can still move around the layers. And this information of how we move the layers is important to keep until the end because maybe here they decided to, to move the pots around a little bit on the left or on the right but for the composition. And this needs to go through in the end until the compositing, of course. Yeah, so that's a real layout file here. And we see the, the parallax is free now. <laughs> you have access to that. Then the, about the characters, we did the, um, the rigging on the uh, Autorig Pro, you might uh, have heard about, uh, made by Lucas Weber. Uh, uh, it was supervised by Pascal Laramondi in, our, in the studio. We made 80%, I think, of the, the rigs, uh, and then uh, some students in Germany helped us. So here are some of the tools we made. So this is, for example, is the load generation uh, creation of uh, an asset. So we divide by two. It's, uh, You'll see uh, it's creating the collection of low polys and stuff in one click. So trying to, you know, little tools to, to, to speed up the production and help the, the, the team to go faster. The let's dance button, of course. You test the rig, you click on a, the click, the let's dance, it's opening the scene and applying a, a stupid animation, but uh, uh, so you can try out, uh, you can try out the, 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 the rig and see if it's uh, jumping around and stuff like that. So see if you have skinned, skinned it well. Here you have it. Of course, it's yeah. It's not uh, an animation, uh, an animator animation. Of course, it's <laughs> technical animation. And if in the case you are wondering, uh, of course, the let's dance button itself, it's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Polkadot system here, um, it's a, a stupid thing we did, it's just um, applying a Polka uh, pattern on the, uh, on, on the character, that, as you can see, locked to the screen. 
This was made for uh, temporary rigs. Uh, any character which was not finished has this uh, shading system on. Play on. So uh, if we started a shot before the rig was finished, or even sometimes using another rig, uh, at least the director can see visually that's not the right character <laughs> in the scene, and not asking a retake saying it's not the right character. We, uh, we know it's not the right character, so we displayed it on, on, on screen. Autorex for props, uh, you import the prop and then there is a one-click Autorex system. Uh, it's uh, handy for, um, I mean, for to, to just gain time and then if you need a specific rig, of course, you will work. Uh, this doesn't need a rig, so you just at least can move the, the object around. There is, this is more tricky, the transfer rig model. So it's a system, if you are uh, happy with a, a, a model you create, a complex model, uh, you can select it. So for example, here the, the clock of the character, and you can select the whole uh, rigging module uh, and then export it and import it in another uh, character. Uh, but it's completely connected back to the to the the auto rig, and it's it's working. It's uh, making us gain a lot of time. Obviously, this character doesn't have a clock, but you will see the result here. Uh, everything is working. So this is why it's useful if you have managed to do something with I don't know, a soldier's bullet system, and you want to apply it to another character. You can just transfer that kind of stuff pretty easily, uh, and and it's working. Uh, the sanity check, of course, the sanity check is super important during production. Uh, some artists can't check that much control point we need during, uh, you know, you have to test a lot of things. So in our case, it's just you, you have a rig, you click a button, and uh, and maybe you start the video. No, it's okay. And and you have a full report made in, in uh, HTML. So it's playing what's wrong in the scene. You can see every, all the tests which have been going in th through and, and passed the test here. So there is a a lot of them, uh, and then you can uh, start the script again with an auto fix option, uh, which is trying to fix as much things as you as it can, depending on how it was programmed every test. So here I started it again, and then uh, we have like six features uh, who were fixed. Uh, so yeah, it takes ten seconds, but um, it's coming. Yeah, and some of them the script cannot fix them, so you still have three things to, to think. That helped us a lot to, to drop uh, completely the, the, the number of issues we had during the production, of course, and I'm trying to get back to my notes here. Yeah, it was made out of uh, a, a Python module uh, called SCARF, Simple Quality Assurance Report and Fixes, uh, made by Damien Dicouro. Uh, former CTO of Ubisoft Motion Pictures and now head of Pipeline at Fortish. Uh, it's Heavily adapted by Clément Benedetti, who worked with us. There is a almost 100 tests, well organized for rigs and props. Uh, here you have some detail. I, I really recommend medium or bigger project to set up a good sanity check because, uh, yeah, provide some love to sanity check, you won't regret it. It's very important. Uh, the, in our case, the bug tickets dropped drastically during the production, so uh, it was very helpful. Now let's go to shots now. So as I mentioned, there is a, um, 1,876 shots in this movie, and that's a lot. Uh, it requires to have things organized well and, uh, and fluent, of course. The first thing is uh, the scene builder. We started the production with Blender 291, so it was proxies back then yet, uh, no uh, over, o overrides, and th so the limitations are known. But it's a hub where you can port characters, uh, switch to low res, high res, you know, this kind of, of stuff. Uh, you can here, you see, we go from 40k uh, 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 vertices to uh, almost 400,000 uh, cases for vertices. So it's uh, very useful for, for animators. This is a hub. Uh, you can switch versions, update assets, and stuff like that. Usually, uh, people won't use that. We we have also this in, in common line. So uh, usually, our asset manager, we just use the same techniques to import everything in the scene. But still, in case uh, we need, we have access to a full uh, GUI uh, uh, interface of this. Uh, and then we can switch to it. later on on 2.93. We can start it switching to overlays in some cases we needed. So it was in cases we needed uh, multiple assets, for example, or stuff like that. And then remove assets and, I don't know, you know, this kind of uh, useful stuff. Um, 
so it was, I mean, I'm just presenting the main uh, features here, but there were many, many features, including renaming, creating caches, and uh, exporting, and stuff like that. So um, then Play Blast, it's always important to, to have good Play Blast and, and, mark, and, and mark the image. The watermarks are uh, very important. We made this tool years ago, and I've been uh, uh, um, evolving it a lot. And it's based on JSON templates and JSON data you provide to the script. It's not only there is a, a Blender add-on, but uh, you can make it work outside of Blender uh, for uh, any other uh, image sequence. And it's a post-process creating also the the movie uh, with uh, Image Magic and FFmpeg. And uh, here you have a, a one, one, one play blast from layout. Here you can see also these Polkadot are available on this character, so it's not the final version of the character, or maybe not even the right one, maybe not the right variation or age or something. And the car also was made by the layout, so they, while the asset is not there, they put the Polkadot just to say that's not the final car, of course. Um, a pose library we did. Um, it's a concept I made, so yesterday, uh, Daniel Martinez made a, a flashback, so I'm doing also a flashback. Uh, uh, in Blender Conference 2015, I presented the idea of uh, creating tools for Blender outside of Blender using WebSockets uh, to connect the tools with, blenders and, with Blender. And I made a prototype for a pose library. We didn't use it for five years, and then we, <laughs> this project came, and we had this uh, um, um, problem coming back. So say, I said, OK, let's dig that idea and create something uh, a little bit more up to date. And the, basi the basic post library linked with the rig was too limited for our, our case. And even the earlier version of the uh, asset manager uh, which were coming was limited. Our case scenario was many animators in across different studios, uh, difficulties to update the rigs or the, the, the library files and stuff like that, uh, not centralized and automatic so, uh, and, and also the, the ability to share poses and animations across characters. Um, so with Minapisha, we create this web page. Uh, so you connect the, 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 the interface and then you double click and then the, the, the poses apply. You can uh, uh, put uh, different options like flip the pose, you can select part of the rigs and say I want to apply the pose. I mean, basic uh, pose library stuff. Uh, of course, then uh, lip sync. Uh, but the idea was to have it um, and easy to to the animators to to use. So, and then you can also mix poses. So with the middle click from the web page, you you you, you mix you know a, a pose. Uh, this kind of stuff, and then you can. It was easy also to save poses. It was very easy to an animator to create its own temporary poses library and then share them with the others. Uh, so just if you are happy with the pose, you just click the the plus button here. You name the pose. All right, and then you take the bones you want, you grab the, the pose. Here it says it saved 18 bones here. You have a, a button to do a snapshot. Uh, you can, you know, it's, everything is connected in real time, so it was uh, very helpful. And it was even more helpful than uh, the lead animator was, I don't know, in Germany, and then in Slovenia animators were working. So if the, any animators put something on the share library, uh, at the same time, instantly, the other animators have access to that. So it can be animation cycles. So I'm not sh showing the animation, but we we have animation uh, also and, uh, and and stuff like that. And then finally, the uh, preparing the the, the, the rendering. So uh, we will get all the files, update the asset. Of course, we you see we have to update the assets here, uh, prepare the layers, uh, the the render layers, the the passes, the, what we call the passes, <laughs> uh, export to export after effect the camera and 3D object. We'll see that later. And uh, the collections are created and set up the node trees created. Uh, so this was uh, like a checklist of, of stuff before rendering and going to compositing. 
Everything was, uh, I mean, 99% of the movie was rendered with Eevee, which was uh, already there. Um, it was great because it was super fast. I mean, these kind of visuals are very fast to, to render. Apart from some shots made with cycles for the shadow catcher, because Eevee didn't have the, the, the shadow catcher stuff, uh, we, we used Eevee, so it was great. Um, and, the, and the sets were not rendered except on some cases of uh, camera mapping, uh, because uh, it's a three object, because all the sets are planes, and we'll send the planes uh, straight to After Effects with the, the, the 3D position of each plane and stuff like that. So we didn't have to render the set, so it was also uh, lighter, and we don't have to, 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 to send a huge image sequence and stuff like that. So going to compositing, so that means leaving Blender now. Uh, just one presentation of how we set up the scene in, in After Effects. We generate a, a, a .bat file with JavaScript um, uh, uh, things. <laughs> And it's creating the, the, the After Effects, importing all the, the layers, importing back the, 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 the Illustrator file, uh, creating the compositions, uh, importing the, the same position of the layers, no matter how they moved. And then we have the, the scene here. We just have to move around a little bit the, the, the render image of the, the characters, for example, and put them in the right place. But, uh, we offered the compositing team to have both uh, 3D uh, compositing uh, composition or 2D, uh, depending on the shot. If there is no camera movement, uh, they use the, you know, you see there is a two composition here, one with the 2D. Uh, they use the 2D one because it's lighter and faster in After Effects than the, the 3D uh, ugly After Effects system. So, but yet, they, if they need it, they can move around stuff. And every th character and props have the, as a locator uh, connected to it, so they can still attach an effect to the character if it's moving, or the vehicle or stuff like that. So, the idea was to have uh, as much things prepared for the artist all the time during the production as we can, so they focus on artistic uh, stuff, of course. We'll see a, a sequence. Um, the sequence, it's early in the movie. Uh, the, the brother of Omid left uh, for the army, so Omid is taking over uh, his brother's job. Uh, it's not the final version. Um, it's uh, also one of the first sequences we did in the movie. <laughs> so there is some uh, uh, little stuff, and it's mixing 2D and 3D, as you, you, you'll see. So you can see the style of the movie. ولی کسی که تو آشپس خونه میاد نباز گوش نداری امرو باز قضای دیده بانارم تو ببری حواست باشه دیر نکن سوری لیتل تکنیکل ایشیو یار حواست باشه دیر نکنی با اینا گشنهشون که میشه گرای خطا میدن اون وقت بیا و بکن که چطوری پیداشون کنم؟ فرشی که چی نگفت بهم؟ میپارایش کن برج سمت چپ رأس ساعت دوازده اونجا باش خودشون پیداد میکنن دیده بانن ناسلامتی So we, we 
think we keep uh, this strong visual style in the in the production and effects. Every visual effects was also done in After Effects directly, so we have these kind of very rounded shapes and stuff like that. So as I mentioned, there is a lot of partners <laughs> in, the, in this project. What it means, uh, it means a lot of uh, studios working because when you find money or, uh, um, in other countries, because of this kind of movie is hard to finance in you know, only one place. It's a adult movie about a war far away, so <laughs> you have to find uh, money around. So um, what it means is you find money in Germany, Germany has to, to, to work with you. So you have to split the work. And there is uh, eight studios in, the, in this project. Uh, um, in, engage in the project. Um, it means also uh, uh, people working from home because of the COVID pandemic. It was the last two years. So uh, studios, uh, home workers, everyone has to be connected and <laughs> working, adding the dependencies, the files, everything. <laughs> and it's a 3D project, so you have textures. I mean, I, won't exp <laughs> I don't have to explain to you what the 3D project means, so a lot of, of things. So of course, we have a lot of tools to do that. You use the usual communication tools, of course, uh, always. Um, there uh, and then for for blender add-ons we create we create an add-on called the 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 package manager so it's an add-on the the graphics will just install there is a uh, network version of the add-on but then you you have the list of uh, package uh, for the project available so you list all the you know it's saved by by department uh, and the idea is you have a, a one-click install button, it's installing the add-on and the dependencies sometimes beep in dependencies, for example, from other Python libraries. Uh, some of the add-ons are great, means we can find them because they are on, on private, uh, uh, private uh, repositories, you need a token. Usually it's not our add-ons, it's add-ons we bought from uh, the Blender market, for example, and the authors don't put them uh, publicly online on some uh, GitHub or GitLab, so we have a, a private copy of them. Then you can install, remove a package. Uh, you know, it's very, very easy to, to set up and having the add-ons uh, updated. So uh, here, for example, uh, there is an add-on which is not updated. So you can see you have a uh, different button. Uh, you can also use the auto-update uh, function, which is on the top of this, which at each start of Blender would check if there is an update on the... Uh, so that was useful for people working remotely, for example, but not for studios. So, you know, we mix things. Then we use uh, Kitsu uh, a lot. Um, um, it's, uh, you might not heard, uh, have heard about it. It's a, uh, a web application where you put all the, 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 you know, track your wall production, so the different shots and, and the, the different departments and review the work, have the different version of, of stuff uh, up uploaded. And then we have the comments from the, the director here, the retext, everything was centralized in, in Kitsu. So, uh, so it was a two years old version. I think we, we, we uh, push it to the limits with uh, that many shots uh, displayed. Uh, but this is the final uh, screen with the, where everything is green, so you are happy because the project is uh, over, uh, of course. So a lot of shots, uh, and then uh, we used we create a tool called LibreFlow. It's based on uh, Cabaret Studio. I will just talk about that uh, quickly. The main idea is uh, uh, an application to to handle the asset management, files, uh, naming conventions, uh, and then synchronization between studios. Uh, I'm going to to show you what was. LibreFlow back then because it's, it, has, it has evolved a lot since we finished the production, but uh, this is what LibreFlow looks like. So basically you log in, it's connected to Kitsu. Uh, so you log in, you have access to uh, a lot of things on, on, the, the, on the production, uh, the library of assets and then the shots, of course. So I'm going to, uh, we can filter and search for shots and stuff like that. So. Uh, open, you have access to departments. Uh, every department has different kind of files, blend files, after effect files, sound, movies, uh, image sequence, uh, textures, I don't know, every, everything can be handled here. And then you can see the, 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 the history of the file. So here in the animation file of, of the shot we, we, we saw so before, I can see that there is nine versions. I have access to the, the, the last one. Uh, the other ones were created by a guy called Ray and uh, we didn't download them yet, so I can just maybe download the previous version if I need. 
here I have the, the previous version. And then the most important thing is creating a, a working copy. So you take a version, published version, and you create your own version so you can work on it and then you'll be able to, to publish it later. So I made a copy of the version 9 for me. So in the history, I can see that there is a, a working copy for, for me. And then I can just double click and it's opening Blender and, uh, and uh, I mean, I can work on the file, obviously. Uh, I won't make any change here, but the idea is then you, you publish the file. So you, you usually put a comment, so you, you know the history of modifications and you know what, what changed on the file, so you can go back to a previous version if the directors want a previous version of the animation, you know, this kind of stuff. Um, and, and that's it, you have the copy. The, there is many actions we create here, send me movies to, to Kitsu in one click, so to avoid uh, people looking around in the file system, where is the file. You know, we have, uh, we, we included a render, little render farm system inside the, the tool, so every playblast was uh, also uh, sent to another computer, for example. Uh, opening uh, RV on this kind of software is also with pre preset uh, combination. No, no, there is many things, and then all the synchronization, synchronization between the studios was made with LibreFlow where uh, you can say, I want, I'm going to work on the animation uh, file, for example, so I want all the dependencies and, and scrubbing the dependencies and, and, and downloading them. To vision LibreFlow, LibreFlow is based on Cabaret. So Cabaret is a framework. Uh, you will still need to create the flow and the actions and describe how you want to do your production, but it's still a great framework, providing a, a easy work for modeling. Uh, workflow, uh, uh, metadata persistence is taking care of saving stuff in, in the database, uh, automatic GUI, so you just type Python in, you don't, you never say I want a button or something, it's just creating the buttons for you, so you just focus on the workflow. Um, but you also have access to the workflow as a Python model if you need uh, in any other uh, script you are doing. Uh, and live update also, that's great because uh, all the cabaret sessions open. Um, uh, if uh, someone in France opens uh, LibreFlow and then someone else in Germany, they are connected together. So if someone updates the something, uh, the other one gets a signal that something has changed, so the, the interface is updated. Um, and then the just type, actually it's based on pipe, so pip install LibreFlow, that's a siren, will just install all the dependencies needed for uh, work. Uh, so it's automatic, so it was very fast to de deploy the tool in, in, in someone's space. Um, if you're interested, we can talk about that later. Um, um, so creating this kind of project is a big stack of tools. Uh, some I presented today, some I didn't have time to present, some are third party tools. Uh, there is, you know, uh, a lot of them. Uh, most of them are available on our GitLab. Uh, most of the, the ones named here are available. Uh, and then on the top part, third party tools we bought and help us a lot. And apart from the, obviously the DCC's Illustrator and After Effects, everything here it's open source. Uh, everything here is GPL, of course. And uh, so we can, we can do a feature film with mostly open source uh, tools and software and, and it's, Great and amazing, and very thankful for, for thankful for at the community for this. Uh, some statistics, statistics, uh, because it's it's, fine, it's always funny to see some numbers and realize. You know, we almost got a hundred thousand publishes on on the, um, on the file system we had. Uh, we put more than hundred thousand comments on Kitsu and twenty six thousand movies uploaded to Kitsu. Also, so this is the kind of numbers we have in the, it's a medium uh, size feature film. It's not, uh, you know, but uh, it's still impressive numbers. <laughs> um, so as I mentioned, you can have access to this code on, on, on our GitLab, 95% uh, at least. Some of the scripting are not shared because they are completely useless outside of a specific context. So we, we they didn't finish on GitLab, but most of it is here. Here is some, um, here is some contact information, of course. <laughs> you can uh, find us on, on the web. We have a tech blog. We are going to make more articles in the incoming uh, days and weeks. So just go back to see more updated stuff. And just to finish, I, I'm going to show some uh, video of the um, 
of the ambience on the different studios while I'm thanking uh, people involved in, in the project. Uh, and in a mouse here. Um, so I will just thank Damien Picard, who I've been working with uh, for 10 years and help and create most of the tools we have seen today. Uh, but Pascal Laramondi for the, the, the rigging system. Uh, Baptiste Delos, who made LibreFlow with me, uh, he, he arrived just days before the first lockdown of the pandemic, and we didn't have time to meet, and he was locked in his place. Clément, uh, Nathalien, for the, our production manager for holding the building, everyone involved at Le Special, of course. Um, and then the studios, so Studio Soy, Trick Film, Daywalker, Amopix, La Station, La Fabrique d'Image, Blue Faces, uh, to name a few people here, Mathias, Sophia, Patrick, uh, uh, thanks for the patience and feedback. Most uh, I, I didn't mention, but the, we were the only studio knowing Blender already. The others were newcomers to Blender, so it was also a lot of support. But they were, you know, patient and willing to learn Blender, so it was great. So very good energy and good willing in finding solutions. Of course, yeah, I mean all the producers uh, uh, involved, the creative team, for trusting us <laughs> on this project. Nadine, Yukiko, and Jean Claude. Um, I want to thank the CNC, it's the French Cinema Commission, uh, and especially the CIT, the Commission d'Industrie Technique, who helped us to create LibreFlow just on the right time, and the Occitanie Film Fund for uh, uh, helping us, because we need to, to create a strong and established creative industry in, outside of Paris. Uh, you would see, there is only images of our studio, but I'm, I'm not uh, explaining every studio here. Uh, special thanks to Zaven, the art director. He was used to guerrilla style, and so this uh, wall feature film and the, the pipeline and the workflow was a little bit strange for him, but uh, we did it, and he's starting a movie now, and I wish him the best with this. And finally, the, the director, Sepi de Farsi, and, and Sebastian, the producer for the movie, and for allowing me to be here, even if the movie is going to be released next year and, and showing already the, all the, the steps. So, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, maybe we can uh, do that now, or otherwise we can meet in the outside. I will be there, uh, the World Conference. So thank you very much. <laughs> any questions? Yeah. 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 So the question is, the fact that having uh, all the backgrounds made out of planes uh, doesn't allow really complex movements of camera, and if we are considering uh, texturing some geometries. Uh, so yeah, the question, is, the, the answer is yeah. We we have limitation with that system. We cannot turn around, of course. We can still do uh, front panning, uh, tr trucking, and truck out. Uh, it's still working. We had some we had some complex shots with even a, 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 a motorbike shots and going through. A, and I, I was pretty sure they couldn't do it without camera mapping. And uh, but they managed just placing all the planes in the right place to. You know, it's fast enough. You don't really. I mean, there is time you notice the the it's planes, but uh, on these kind of shots. But uh, I think there is only I don't know. 10 to 20 shots with camera mapping. So we had to, in this case, render the sets, but that's it. So, uh, the, the movie is not using a lot of mo camera movement also because of the art style. Uh, there is no, you know, because of the art style, there is no blur in the movie, so there is no motion blur, there is no, and this is also why there is that amount of shots uh, compensating some of the, the stuff you can do with uh, normal uh, camera movements and stuff, and it's overcutting the to compensate this kind of uh, lack of some stuff we didn't want to use. But yet, in some of the, on the movement, I think they made a pretty good job on, on, on most of these shots. Uh, there is some shots I'm not very happy with, but uh, I mean, it's oh, I mean, in any of our production, we end up with uh, shots we don't like. But uh, uh, it, it was just just enough. But yeah, we consider camera mapping, of course. Any other question? Yes.
Thanks. So the question is uh, that almost all the stack of softwares are open source, except from the two DCCs, which are Illustrator and After Effects, of course. And how far we are for uh, to to find alternatives to this? So if it, you mentioned um, Inkscape, of course, I think the were was made in Illustrator because the 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 the, the design team started before and uh, was just very used to Illustrator. So sometimes you cannot change everything uh, at the same time. Uh, After Effects is more complicated. Uh, I mean, this is an ongoing discussion in the industry. How can we replace After Effects? <laughs> uh, um, because uh, Blender is making uh, things better on the compositing side, but y yet you have this, uh, uh, in this case, a uh, lot of um, uh, shapes to create in, the, in, in compositing and stuff. So today, this kind of project will be very hard to do, uh, I think, in another uh, software. But uh, um, we hope for uh, new things. Uh, I mean, yeah. So it's still a great. Uh, we 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 are not completely uh, close to to non open source software. Of course, they are doing great jobs also outside in the industry. So, um, but uh, you know, it depends. I think uh, I think in, in we will find depending on the who is starting the project and and the, because for example we, at the studio we use a lot of Krita instead of Photoshop even if we have Photoshop licenses we we try to push that and some of, some of our artists now switch completely to Krita and don't want to go back to Photoshop it's also part of the training and and changing the the mentalities and trying things uh, and 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 I'm not sure some I, I need to I, I should check that uh, some of the big big uh, layers we have in this movie I'm not sure I, I need to check if uh, Inkscape can handle them also with 70 10k uh, layers and stuff like that so uh, yeah I need to but we have to to start to continue pushing and 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 try things definitely anyone else. Yeah, uh, there is one here, and then yeah. So I, I didn't see any grid pencil. Oh. Is, is it because uh, when we're working on the movie, it's was not in the in a state of uh, uh, ready for production for you, or is it because of the visual style? Uh, so you say we didn't see any grid pencil, and why? Why is why we didn't see any grid pencil? Actually, you see some, and I didn't mention it. So <laughs> thanks for asking it. Uh, we use grease pencil in the movie for some effects, so it was already present. Grease pencil two was uh, there yeah, already, and uh, we used it for uh, some water effects, some tears and stuff like that. So the animator can do it uh, on on the on shot directly, and you saw it in the in the the sequence I show you when it takes a chicken and open it. Uh, uh, the, the the rigging system is just basically chicken two legs, so you don't don't have all the flesh uh, destroyed. And this is grease pencil actually, so we use it. I think it, there is 50 shots in the movie using grease pencil. So uh, yeah, I didn't mention it, but uh, thanks. <laughs> and um, how will we watch the movie when it's finished? Is it in theaters in the countries? Yeah, so how you will be able to see the movie when it's released. So yeah, hopefully in theaters, uh, whenever they decide to release it. I think they are aiming for a big festival uh, next year before releasing it. Uh, at least all the countries involved in the project will have uh, released in theaters and hopefully more uh, places will uh, screen it also. So yeah, it will be in, in I mean, it's a, it's a feature film made for cinema, so it's, it will be the usual uh, cinema uh, time, time shuttle um, way of screening things. Yeah. So hopefully you will be able to see it soon. And uh, so I'm, I'm really willing to see the last version of this movie and uh, how it's working. We have seen all the shots one by one. And, Anyone else? No? Well, thank you for being here and uh, we can have a coffee outside. Have a great Blender conference. <laughs>